Distinguished members of the committee, thank you for allowing me to be here today to address the violence in our country. My name is Lucretia Hughes Klukin. I have four children and nine grandchildren. On the night of April the 2nd, 2016, my family got a phone call that would change our lives forever. My ex-husband answered the phone and let out a blood-curdling scream, a scream of pain from the depths of his soul. He screamed, he cried, he's gone, he is gone. Our 19-year-old son, Emmanuel, went to a party early that night. After we got the call, we was frantic. We called his phone, no one answered. We called even the police. I went to Facebook and I had to ask, is my son dead? I found out that he was shot point blank in the head and killed while playing dominoes. No one spoke up for weeks and the killer was on the run. No one was going to snitch, but that is the street life. Words can't describe how hard it is to bury a child. I ache for anyone and all who have done the same. My son's death was a result of a criminal with an evil heart and a justice system failing to hold him accountable for the laws he had already broken. You see, a convicted felon killed my son with an illegally obtained gun. Our gun control lobbyists and politicians claim that their policies will save lives and reduce violence. Well, those policies did not save my son. The laws being discussed are already implemented in cities across this country. We have decades of evidence proving they do not work. St. Louis, New York, Chicago, Washington, Atlanta are gun control utopias, and they are plagued with the most violence. 10 more laws, 20 more laws, 1,000 more won't make what has already illegal more wrong or stop criminals from committing these crimes. And y'all are delusional if you think it's going to keep us safe. I am a walking testimony of how the criminal justice system and the gun control laws, which is steeped in racism, by the way, have failed the black community. By the age of 25, I had already went to 18 young black men funeral at the age of 25. I have one black man in jail, one black man in the grave, and my young grandson gonna be raised without a father. And it's a curse on the black community and everyone else's. Something has to change. Thoughts and prayers and calls for more gun control isn't enough. How about letting me defend myself from evil? I, you don't think that I'm capable and trustworthy to handle a firearm. You don't think that the Second Amendment doesn't apply to people that look like me? Who and you who would call for more gun controls are the same ones that are calling to defund the police? Who is supposed to protect us? We must prepare to be our own first responders to protect ourselves and our loved ones. I am a legal, law-abiding citizen, and I don't need the government to save me. I teach people how to use a firearm. I empower others to look at me to understand the Second Amendment is their right. I am a proud member of the DC Project Women for Gun Rights, we believe that education is the key to safety, not ineffective legislation. We support meaningful solutions that will actually save lives. We support the Safe Student Act, H.R. 7415, 
which would immediately make schools safer. In hindsight, a Parkland, we saw failure of the government at every level fell in the students. Students saw something and they said something. And the school did not act. Police were called to his residence over 30 times and they did not act. And finally, the police did not go into their school that fateful day and failed to protect those kids. We need to secure our, secure our schools and we gotta secure this building or like y'all do. What's the difference? We call on Congress to ban gun-free zones, fund nonpartisan firearm education programs like Kids Safe Foundation and non-governmental mental health organizations like Hold My Guns. And in closing, I claim that nothing in these bills do anything to make us safer or address the mental health crisis in this country. Despite living with the heartache of losing my son on a daily basis, I believe it is our God-given right to defend ourselves from any act of violence, making it more difficult or even more expensive for me and people that look like me and other law-abiding citizens will not make us safer. It will embolden the criminals. Gun owners are not the enemies, and these gun control policies are not the solution.